السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين My dear viewers Welcome once again to another live edition uh, of Askuda during the blessed month of Ramadan. It's already the 10th day of Ramadan. MashaAllah. One third of the month is already over. And one third is actually a lot, uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. Uh, quickly, let me remind you with our phone numbers and the contact informations. Phone numbers beginning with area code to WhatsApp uh, numbers, area code 001-361-489-1503. Alternatively, area code 001-347-806-0025. And then we have two local numbers beginning with area code 002, then, <coughs> excuse me, 002, then 0238551322. And finally, area code 002, then 01005469323. Uh, yesterday, there was a question from one sister whose husband uh, mocks at her whenever she is in her menses and she is not fasting. And I can simply say, what a shame. Uh, such behavior would not even take place from an ordinary person, let alone a Muslim who's fasting. A person who knows that this is something which simply Allah the Almighty created in every normal woman. And uh, our mothers of the believers, whether Aisha or Hafsa or Zainab, all of them used to experience the same. Aisha radiallahu anha upon entering Mecca for Hajj. Her menses started and she was crying. She was in tears. You know, and every Muslim woman, whenever she goes for Umrah or Hajj or in Ramadan, they feel very bad, they feel terrible. And they keep asking the question, well, uh, is it an indication that Allah doesn't like me? Allah is angry with me. Allah is not going to accept my ibadah. Allah is not going to accept my hajj or my fasting. And we keep assuring them that is not true whatsoever. But guess what? These questions of theirs indicate that they are good believers. They are not enjoying the free ride. They are not somebody who says, oh, cool, man, I don't have to fast. Anyway, they will make up the missed fasting. And in Hajj and Umrah, she will be sitting in her room or outside the masjid. And she cannot enter the masjid. She cannot do tawaf. It is very painful. And that's why it is expected from the husband, if he is a real man, to give her some emotional support, moral support, spiritually uplift her and tell her that's okay no problem your your word will not be diminished the least because you didn't choose to fast but to mock her and make fun of her this is very ridiculous may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sister najiba from the uk welcome to ask with najiba Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Shaykh, my question is, uh, if someone wanted to, uh, like if I wanted to memorize some verses from the Quran, uh, can I um, memorize these verses uh, while I'm uh, uh, praying Salah, during Salah? Okay, uh, what do you exactly mean by saying while praying Salah? If you mean that I memorized a couple verses before the prayer and I just repeated them in my prayer, it is okay, but in the prayer itself, it is not an experiment to uh, look at the Mus'haf and memorize, no. In the prayer, you recite either by heart from your memory, what you have memorized, or you read from the Quran if it is nafila. But in the Fard prayer, in the Fard namaz, it is not permissible to read from the Mus'haf or the Quran. 
So what you need to do is, outside the Salah, I have been trying to memorize Surah al ghashiyah I've memorized half of it. Allahu Akbar in the Maghrib prayer. I recited the same ayat. Al Ataq Hadith al Ghashiya. Wujuhun Yawma Idin Ghashiya. Amilatun Nasiba. I recited them in the first raka'ah and I can recite them in the second raka'ah and I can keep reciting them in Isha, first and second raka'ah and so on. And that will emphasize my memorization. Alright? Najiba? Let's take another caller. Hisham from India. Assalamu alaikum, brother Hisham. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, because one day I heard that if, uh, if it rains in off season, like it rains in winter, it rains in summer, that means God is not, not happy with us. Basically, if it rains in off-season, God is not happy with us. How true is it? Obviously, Hisham, these are some Hindu's traditions, but it have nothing to do with Islam. Rain is always a sign of mercy. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to supplicate whenever it rains. And he used to go out and receive the rain, and he says, إِنَّهُ حَدِيثُ عَهْدٍ This rain, this rain water has not been polluted and contaminated by our sins. Uh, it's just coming from heaven, from the Almighty Allah. When the Almighty sends down the rain, that's a sign that He is pleased and happy with His servants. It's a sign of mercy, whether in winter or in summer, off season or on season. So what you heard is not an Islamic tradition whatsoever. Okay? Barakallah <laughs> fikum. Hisham from India. Many times we emphasize that we got to make a clear distinction between what is cultural and what is religious. Islam, alhamdulillah, spread all over the earth. In the Indian subcontinent where people use, and some are still Hindus, and some are Buddhist in some other countries, uh, they have a lot of traditions and a lot of myth. Uh, uh, and accordingly, they may inherit that after they accept Islam. Or some Muslims, they become superstitious because of their old traditions or cultural traditions, including all the way to the honor, killing, taking the law in your hand. All of that has nothing to do with Islam. So what Hisham did was the very right thing. You ask. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, إِنَّمَا دَوَاءُ الْعِيِّ السُؤَالِ I don't know, I ask. You know what happened? When, when, when the companions were about to do something, uh, and actually in another incident they did it without asking, there was one of the companions traveling in an expedition. He was severely injured. He had a head injury. And then... Coincidentally, at night he also happened to experience wood dream, which means he should do ghost. When they all woke up for fajr in the desert, in the peninsula, it's extremely cold, really, really cold. Some people assume that that desert and the peninsula is, all, is always hot. No, it gets freezing and below zero. So he consulted the companions. He said, since I have this head injury and uh, it is extremely cold, we don't have hot water, can I just observe tayammum instead of ghost? General consensus, they all said no. Why not? They said because we have water. The Quran says, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا which means sayammum is only permissible as a concession in case that there is no water, but we have the water. So you don't have a choice, you must observe ghost. So he showered with the cold water, and unfortunately he died. Some people might perceive this as martyrdom. Oh, he died for, for the sake of Allah. No, actually when the Prophet ﷺ heard about what happened, he was very infuriated with them. And you know what he said? He considered them liable for his death. 
He said, قَتَلُوهُ قَتَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ They are responsible for his death. May Allah punish them. So sometimes the matter is simple. I'm talking about cultural traditions, which people sometimes confuse with what is religious, and sometimes they treat them as uh, religious matters. Somebody sees uh, a flip-flop or slippers flipped on uh, top. So the bottom is up. They say, this is a bad omen. They see a crow. This is a bad omen. They see a black cat. This is a bad omen. None of that, none of that counts. None of that is considered in Islam. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, لا عدوى ولا طيرة. So the bad omen being pessimistic, none of that is actually uh, to be considered in Islam. Whatever befalls us is all from the Almighty, good or bad. Whatever befalls us was not going to skip us. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ وَمَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبُكَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, one sister okay here is a question Abu Bakr from Ghana is asking I just see the question I don't know what is wrong with the uh, sound uh, that if somebody happened to spit something like sputum mucus then he swallowed it back. I know it is gross and no one would ever do that. But you know sometimes when the person in the prayer uh, <coughs> and then he wants to uh, spill out or to spit out some mucus, it comes out in the mouth cavity. Then he searches for uh, neckerchief, mm, tissues, whatever, and they end up swallowing it. It's gross, but you know, if you do that deliberately, it invalidates fasting. Somebody might say, but this is not food, this is not drink, it's gross. Yes, you deliberately admitted something into your esophagus which will make its way into uh, the stomach. It doesn't have to be nutritive, it doesn't have to be palatable. So if it comes to the mouth cavity, you must spit it out. You can take it in your own clothes. Uh, Brothers and sisters, it's time to take a short break and inshallah we'll be back in a couple minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second segment of Ask Kura. And we have Fuad from the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, wa alaikum salam. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking for it. And you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, brother, can I have a dua request, a very important one for myself? Bismillah. Uh, what do you have in mind? Uh, just for everything, health, everything. Okay, then, then, make dua for me. then asking for barakah is sufficient because it's very comprehensive. May Allah bless you. May Allah fill your life with barakah. May Allah relieve you from whatever harm, difficulty, and hardship that you have. May Allah bless you for that. Thank you for calling. Barakallahu feek. And brothers and sisters, when somebody requests us for dua, let's all pray for him or her or them. Assalamu alaikum. Amatullah from the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, yeah, Sheikh, I, I know someone who's been going through a lot about um, finances, but she's not the one who took the credits and stuff. It's her husband without consulting her, and then he has been using those credit cards for a while. Then she found out about it, and the credit is over like 40000 mm. and there's mm. interest being charged every single time, mm. and there's... The husband is not paying it, so everything falls on her now. 
Mm-hmm. There's no way she can pay it because she's not working, staying home with the children. And she w- I'm listening. I'm at Allah. And she was wondering if she could, because she wants to also, she doesn't want to have her bad credit all like this, for that. So she was wondering if she can file bankruptcy. But I don't know what to do. Could you please guide her? طيب. First of all, a woman has her independent financial status. And subhanallah, last night we have like a fiqh council concerning a case. A woman who is a bread earner, she's the main provider for the family, and the husband is abusive and he takes her money and he says, as long as you're working, uh, Sharia says, I have the right over your wealth. So I answered, this is absolutely not true. Whether a man or a woman have their own independent position and full access to their wealth, if a wife decides to give willing anything to her husband as a gift or as a loan, then it is according to what they agreed to. If she gives him a loan, then he must pay her back. And if he dies, then before dividing the inheritance, she will collect the loan then she will collect her share of the inheritance. But to say me and my wife are the same so I can use her credit card and mess up her repetition and credit score, that is not permissible. So let us saw this right and set it straight. It is not permissible for neither one of the spouses to use the credit card or the bank card of the other without their consent, simply because they are married or a husband and wife. To say that a wife didn't know that her husband has been using her credit card until now she owes the bank or the credit card 40k in addition to the interest and she doesn't have any money to pay. This is absolutely illegal. This is absolutely haram and not permissible. And he's the one who should pay. Filing for bankruptcy, brothers and sisters, is something in the West like in the States, if somebody doesn't have the means to pay the loans, if they file for bankruptcy, then the creditors would not chase them anymore, simply that they will be having a bad credit for about five years. Then after five years, they can start building up a new credit. And this way, the banks, the creditors will not go after his positions or properties. Some people do it in order to get away with their loans. They actually have the money and they can settle the debt. I can assure you that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even a person who dies as a shaheed, a martyr, who will go straight to heaven, all his sins will be forgiven except debt and loan. Don't you think that if you are super righteous servant with Allah, and you owe people money and you didn't pay that you can get away with it. No. Can you imagine that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to refuse leading the funeral prayer for any one of his companions if they owed any money, not until somebody would settle their debt, their ears and their family members. This is very serious. So let's say that I filed for bankruptcy and now started building up a new credit. Is it over? No. Now you have the money, you have to pay it off. And I have made some people after 15 years pay, you know, they say the credit cards do not demand the money anymore. This money must be paid either to them or to be given in a charity in their name, whether it's a bank, an institute or an individual. Because you owe somebody money, you have to pay it off. You have to pay it back. You don't get away when you just file for bankruptcy. Assalamu alaikum. Suhaib from Norway. Welcome to Ask with Suhaib. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was uh, calling uh, you some days ago. I don't know if you remember me regarding uh, fasting and working 12 to 14 hour shift. Yeah. Yeah, now uh, I remember. Um, I pr- yeah, yeah. I, I tried to message you as well on the Facebook, but uh, since you didn't answer and I need a little bit quick uh, answer, so I sure. was thinking to call and ask you on live instead. Mm-hmm. So I, I talked with uh, my boss about this 
what you say, and uh, I also reported him. Uh, but they said that it will take two to three weeks before I get some answers mm. regarding uh, uh, what actions uh, the uh, you can say the government can do. Mm. And uh, when I sat and talked with him, I said to him that I will I want to leave the job. He told me that since you have the manager position, you need to work two months. That's the contract uh, before you can leave. In the meantime, uh, in the meanwhile, now I was wondering how can I fast? How can I fast during the Ramadan while he's not cooperating? MashaAllah. This is my concern. You know, once again, I remember your question now. Now, MashaAllah, once again, Sahib, you're calling from Norway not from a backwarded country and things like that you know the government the social work they will take action innocently but they say that in a few weeks in a couple of months you know uh, that is not acceptable whatsoever you only work for the working hours and you do not work overtime if that affects your fasting because fasting is compulsory is mandatory and Alhamdulillah, the law gives you all the right not to work overtime. And your manager is abusive. And you report in him, now you only work the legal time and you do not work any extra time. Unless if you're capable to do so, or work at night while you're not fasting. Barakallahu feekum, uh, Suhaib from Norway. Rayyan from the USA. Welcome to Ask with Arayan. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are alaykum you? Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I only have one question, and my only question is um, specifically for somebody who was born Muslim, but they grew up uh, not necessarily practicing Islam very much. And, and in short, basically, now, alhamdulillah, Allah guided them, they're practicing but they they are they have they have nadam in their hearts but they feel like the nadam is is eating them up they feel like they cannot live normally because of how they feel how can a person deal with this as as time as time goes on jazakallah read in the verses about allah's vast mercy and allah being the oft forgiving the most merciful will take care of that abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu and said, Arja aya fi kitabillah, the greatest verse in the book of Allah, in respect of hope, is the verse of Surah Al Zumar. So I refer this person to this verse, in which the Almighty says, Qul ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqanaku min rahmatillah, inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhunuba jami'a. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say to my servants who transgressed against themselves, despair not of Allah's mercy. Why? Because indeed Allah forgives all sins. Uh, all sins, all sins, including if somebody was a kafir, then he accepted Islam. Saying La ilaha illallah will remit all their previous sins. They will be newborn. Somebody was born to Islam, but to a Muslim family, but due to the culture and the parents being careless, never knew anything about Islam. And now he came to know and he accepted Islam willingly. Likewise, that applies to him. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you thank Allah for having guided you while you're still breathing. And you catch up instead of wasting time thinking about the past. You pray the fard. Uh, and alongside with it, the nawafil, the voluntary prayers. You fast during Ramadan, and after Ramadan, you can fast voluntary fasting. You give extra charity, you recite Quran, you help people. All these good deeds will make up, inshallah, for the past uh, days when the person was not practicing. So uh, keep in mind that the Almighty Allah is the oft forgiven, the most merciful. It's good to feel remorse, it's good to feel bad, but not to the extent that it will stop you from practicing, from fulfilling your duties properly, from observing your ibadat. That will do the opposite. It will simply distract you. May Allah guide all of us to what is best, and may Allah accept our brother's repentance. Ameen. 
it is time to take our second break and we'll be back inshallah shortly please stay tuned Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back my dear viewers I believe we have some callers on the line brother Amir from Germany Assalamu alaikum Amir Alaikum salam Sheikh How, How are, are you? you doing? Alhamdulillah I'm doing great and you? Uh, Alhamdulillah Sheikh I'm trying to give my best for Ramadan but uh, Shaitan doesn't leave me alone I have a question Yes, go ahead. Uh, we live here in the we live here in the West, and uh, we have. I am working in a phone shop, and we have customers all the time. And um, I'm going to Hajj uh, this year, inshallah. Mashallah. And uh, sometimes they make fun of it, uh, like um, of my beard, and he says, oh, "I have a beard too. Uh, I can go to Hajj too." And I'm not laughing, but I'm like smiling. I mean. I'm now shaitan comes and says oh, you did kufr you 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 are out of islam and uh, i get these words all the time mm. you know what i mean uh, i i tried i don't know how to react um what do i do best wallahi if i were you amir i would take advantage and open a conversation with the person because to me it doesn't sound like he is mocking at you or making fun of hajj i say yeah sure why not why don't you try? And I start giving him da'wah, you know? And I've done that before, especially with regards to hajj, I mean. Uh, as for you, when you smile when somebody says, yeah, I have a beard too, I can go for hajj, there is nothing wrong with that, you know? You are a believer, you're Muslim, you're praying, and you're praying for hajj, alhamdulillah. What makes you ever think that you left Islam or you're out of the fold of Islam. These evil whispers from Satan, you should deal with them as follows. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim I seek refuge with Allah again as the outcast Satan. Amantu billahi wa rusulihi. I believe in Allah and all his messengers. And that's it. Barakallahu feek Amir from Germany. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Taslima from the USA, welcome to uh, Huda yeah. TV. Yeah. Yes, Taslima. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Taslima, are you still on the phone or this call is dropped? Okay. Taslima, try again, please. Assalamu alaikum, Muhadda from Nigeria. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How's the Ramadan? Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. How's everything with you? Um, I mean, alhamdulillah. Okay. Sheikh, I have two questions. Bismillah. I'm please. ready to take your questions. Sheikh, my first question is on if thing far please i want i want to how do i how do i do sincere if thing far the is thing far that allah is promising so many things how do i do how do i practice put this instinct far into practice that allah is saying he will give this thing this thing how do i do this is thing far type count with me uh muhazab after every prayer who say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah three times. In the morning when I pray Fajr, MashaAllah, I sit tight and I recite Astaghfirullah al azima wa atubu ilayh 100 times. Okay? Or you can just say Astaghfirullah al azim 100 times minimum. You can make them 200, 300 as you wish. Uh, in the evening, before sunset, you do the same. In your prayer, in your sujood, you say, Astaghfirullah al azim which is, I seek refuge with Allah, or I seek Allah's forgiveness, the greatest. I ask Allah the greatest to forgive me. You can also follow the Prophet ﷺ in saying, 
أستغفر الله العظيم وأتوب إليه عبد الله بن عمر may Allah be pleased with him and his father said that we used to count for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم over a hundred times in the same sitting أستغفر الله العظيم وأتوب إليه which means I seek forgiveness from Allah the greatest and I repent unto him then also another time which is best especially nowadays everybody gets up for suhoor uh, and Fajr prayer, uh, 15, 20 minutes before Fajr, this is the best time to say Astaghfirullah al azim as many times as possible, a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, because the Almighty Allah admired those who do the following in Surah Al-Thariyat, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Al-Ashar, plural of Sahar, which is the time before Fajr. Barakallahu feek. May Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, go ahead. What is your second, second question, question, please? The second question is yes. what is the previous the, the, the what's the mean, meaning of this verse? Waya call me Aftan Firua Bakum Tubu Suma Tubu Ilahi Rusul Sama Alekum Idara. Wazir kum uwatan ila uwatin wala tatawala mujurimi. Well these verses, these verses along with the verses of Surah Nuh, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدَكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا And the verses that you quoted, uh, يَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Which means seek forgiveness from your Lord and repent unto him. Uh, and if you do, the Almighty will send down the rain in abundance. The concept of sending down the rain means life, means prosperity, means plenty of blessings. Because the most advanced country and the richest states in the world, whether it's Texas or California, if there is no rain, they bankrupt. People just depart. So Beverly Hills, will be like a graveyard. Houston, Texas will be like a cemetery. Talk you without rain, no life. No one would live there, even if there is oil. So when uh, he says, يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا That means one of the advantages of seeking forgiveness that the Almighty Allah will be, ble will be pleased with you and he will send the rain in abundance and he will provide you with fruits, with money, with wealth, with children and so on. Assalamu alaikum. Tasneema from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Tasneema, before uh, you ask your question, how are you viewing this program right now on social media or on the website or satellite? Hello? Can you hear me yeah, Tasneema? my question? Did you hear my question? Yeah. Taslima? Yeah, my question. Yeah, my question is uh, like uh, my period, it finished last night, okay? okay. And uh, here, further time is start at 5.58. And I ate my soho. And uh, I took that, uh, you know, that uh, fudge whistle at 6.15. So should I continue my fasting or uh, Taslima, I break my fast? Taslima, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing. Okay, fact number one. How long is your period normally? It's like uh, six days. And now how many days? Uh, like yesterday night it stopped. How many nights, how many days when it stopped? Uh, like it started from 14, 14 now, like uh, yeah. your time. Yeah, Taslima. For how many days did you have your menses this month? How many days this month before it uh, stopped? Six, six days, like uh, total six days. So normally, normally six days and this month you had it for six days, correct? Yeah. Now. After it stopped completely and there was no discharge whatsoever or clear discharge, today what happened? Did you see spotting? No, no, nothing, like clear. 
So why are you asking? Where is the question if it is clear? Yeah, it's clear. What, what is your question then? The, that I took my, you know, that I ate suhoor, okay? Ah, uh, you took your bath after Fajr? I took that gusol like in say... Oh, got uh, it. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Performing ghusl after the menses have stopped does not affect your fasting. What affects is it's over. There is no bleeding no more. Even if you happen to take your ghusl after Fajr. Thank you. Barakallahu feekum. Teslima from the USA. <clears throat> Sino from Austria. Assalamu alaikum Sino. Wa alaikum assalam. You hear me? Yes, clearly, mashaAllah. Uh, okay. Um, I would like to ask what to do if uh, my neighbor brings me halal food and this food which was brought was uh, cooked using utensils, utensils like a cutting board or pants which my neighbor also uses for haram food, like pork or alcohol. Can we Ta eat this food? See no, see no. Uh, were, were the utensils washed? If somebody used a pan to fry bacon or to whatever, then it was washed thoroughly. It's halal to cook halal food in it. Okay? I don't know. Ask them. And why did you ask, why did you find it easy to ask them, is this food halal or not? And you didn't have a problem with that? You can ask them. Make sure that we don't eat pork. Was the frying pan clean? Did you wash it? It's okay because you said you're friends. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. It is not permissible to cook halal meat in the same pan where there is lard or left over from bacon or pork contaminating our halal food with haram makes it haram. Assalamu alaikum. Zaina from the USA, welcome to Huda TV. Naam, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. I call to thank you. Alhamdulillah, I'm able to watch Huda TV live streaming. Jazakallah khair. Oh, shukran. Thank you so much, Zainab. May Allah bless you. It sounds like you're jogging in the park, though, or exercising. MashaAllah. Okay, all the viewers I would appreciate because it seems like, you know, some uh, Facebook platforms uh, is encountering some trouble and interruption. If you're watching this program, particularly via my Facebook page, please inform me and how is the streaming, whether it's clear, audio, video, or if it is interrupted, please let me know. Also, it would be super nice if you can tell me where you're watching from. Assalamu alaikum. I can take one more call. Musa from South Africa, welcome to Ask Huda Musa. Ji, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you both? Alhamdulillah, and yourself? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm asking about the Ramadan. Uh, what time to finish making uh, like a... Like a as I'm, I'm asking about the iftar. When you finish iftar, then what do I can make after iftar? You finish it. Uh, thank you, Musa. Barakallah fikum. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us: before iftar, your supplication will be answered. Then once you eat the first date, you say the following: "Zahab al zama." وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله ذهب الظمأ thirst had been conquered I just drank وابتلت العروق and the veins had been moistened وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله and the word has been confirmed God willing this is a supplication you eat after you break your fast immediately now when it comes to the meal before you eat you say بسم الله and after you finish, you say the regular supplication. Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amana wa saqana. Praises be to Allah who gave us the food and the drink and made us Muslims. 
okay you thank Allah by every mean by whichever way saying Alhamdulillah for providing us with the food since the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said in the sound hadith inna Allah la yarda anil abdi an yakul al aklata fayahmadahu alayha aw yashrab al sharbata fayahmadahu alayha indeed Allah is so pleased with his servant whenever he eats whenever he drinks he thanks him May Allah the Almighty be pleased with all of us, brothers and sisters. By that, we've come to the end of today's edition of Ask Buddha. And until tomorrow, inshallah, I leave you all in the care of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.